stress me out. The day flies by so fucking quick. It's like I look up and I'm like, holy shit, dude, it's almost time to close the rest of the fucking store. Right. It just goes by so quick. Uh, all right, Mikey. So as usual, we will uh as usual oops. Uh what we are gonna do is uh I'm going to cue the music, and when I do, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get us started at about 30 seconds in. Okay. Oh, fuck, I fuck, I fuck you. <sighs> get your game face on. I'm ready. I've got all my magic laid out exactly where I need it. Yeah. I do got something I want to talk to you about, if you don't mind, after we get done. Sure. I need a little more than an hour's footage because that'll be three videos that I can six 750 watch time hours on simultaneously first thing Thursday. Once I do that Thursday, that'll get it started. And then Friday, I'm going to repeat it on the same three videos. It says one to three weeks to completion. But um, that'll put me actually a couple of hundred above. Uh, a couple of hundred above where I need to be to start monetization. And then I just need to keep this strategy going, dumping 50 bucks into it and just making sure I keep up on subscribers and fucking views or watch hours. Yep. Because. Have you hit a thousand yet? Mm hmm. We had a thousand and twelve. Nice. All righty. So. So how come you're not letting people comment on the videos? I am. When I go to, when, when, as a subscriber, if I go to try to do comments, it says comments are not available. Huh. Well, that's weird. Nobody can leave a comment on the show. Yeah. Alrighty. Cue <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the X Storm Show. I'm your host, Apex Rebel X. Got my wonderful, good friend, an outstanding magician, Mr. Magic Mike Ovard. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Dude, I got to remember to make an entrance like that. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about getting us in a parade one year. And just drop out the fucking sky, Iron Man style. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Hey, really land, literally man. play ACDC the Shoot the Thrill while we're doing it. That'd be dope. I'm down for that. You know what I'm also down for? What's up? The fact that you, my friend, have hit over a thousand subscribers. Yes. Yes. Congrats, my friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well deserved. Hopefully everybody that's watching right now keeps that up and we can get that boosted up. Um, I was just telling X a little bit ago that there seems to be some sort of issue going on with uh, leaving uh, a, a, script, uh, a message for uh, X on the channel. He's going to get that resolved for you guys because I want you guys to be able to leave comments because as we told you before, after the thousand subscribers, we're going to try to pick somebody to give them away a prize for that thousand hits. So as soon as we can 
address the issue and get that all fixed, we'll go ahead and figure out that prize and announce that on one of the next episodes. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm sorry that I did not notice that. I've literally been setting these videos open to comments, but uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. Been I just noticed it myself today. That's how I caught it today, and that's what I brought it to your attention. And I just wanted to, uh, you know, let everybody out there know that you know it was an accident. Just noticed the issue. We're, X is going to get it resolved as soon as possible. Um, X, well, I mean, thousand man, that's pretty awesome. So, uh, what's been uh, what's been going on with you lately? I mean, I've just been. Uh, just been working myself and you know trying to get you know still trying to do my best with the business and everything you know trying to get magic up and running on my end and you you seem to be doing the right things on your end so uh what's going on with you man aside from this marketing strategy you know we ain't really got much going on uh unfortunately we are having we are still having some issues with some hardware so uh, we've had to bring animations to a screeching halt. But uh, actually, in the meantime, I've got a few titles that I can actually convert into readable material as well. I mean, it's not easy at all to get graphic novels onto the market. But by all means, you know, once you break through that wall, you're there. I mean, competing with the big three is a nightmare because yeah. Marvel is yeah, battling for the number one position always. There ain't no break in that. No. Uh, and no, they're, 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 those, those two are just well to establish. Dark Horse and Image Comics. Yeah. Because the other two, you're not, you're not touching those. It's just... The character bases and the, they're just well way too established. They're way too grounded. Most of those characters are more recognizable than Mickey Mouse, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's kind of funny that you say it like that because, you know, we've noticed already, we've mentioned it on the show, Hollywood is doing a whole lot of rebooting. <laughs> Yes. Okay, just the other day, I watched the reboot of Jeepers Creepers, Jeepers Creepers Reborn. Oh, how was that? <sighs> yeah. I preferred the other two. It's all right. So tonight, in my household, we've decided that we're going to watch the remake of Roadhouse. <laughs> Wait, of the Patrick Swayze Roadhouse? Yeah, so the Patrick Swayze Roadhouse. It's going to be shit. It, it might be. It's got Jake Gyllenhaal in it. Are they fucking retarded? I think it was Jake Gyllenhaal. Pretty sure it was. Dude, I could be wrong. That, that's just like, uh, that's just like, uh, what's that dumbass's name from Bupkiss? He always plays an idiot. He was in the I, second Suicide Squad movie. Oh, um, did he play? Was he the one that played Boomerang? Uh, no, 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 no. He uh, he played some kind of like cowardly fucking role. Like he did not last long in the movie. Uh, I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen it. D yeah, you know, it just shows how good of an actor he is. If we yeah, movie buffs can't. can't even remember him, it's like it's like it's like in one hand I know who you're talking about, in the other hand I'm like so confused. Yeah, and like, okay, so they're talking about doing a reboot of the Crow, and guess who they want to play the fucking Crow in Brandon Lee's place? Who? This dumbass. Oh Jesus! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Uh, you know what? I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to look this up right quick. What you say? Sounds good to me. We're going to look this up right quick because you know what? We got plenty of time to shoot an episode today. I think we can breach that hour mark, don't you? Okay. Hold on, hold on. I want to share entire screen. There we go. Hey, Mike. See how old you are. There's so many of these. 
I'm everywhere. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm, I'm going to look up this cast of Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad, I should say. Okay, there he is. Oh, Pete Davidson? Yes. He's a comedian from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, and he should keep his day job. He's great as a comedian. I am not going to argue that in Idris Elba for Bloodsport. Who was he in the movie? Who, Pete Davidson? Yeah, what is his character's name? It says it at the bottom. Blackguard. Huh, not sure about that one. Yeah. But Idris Elba, they had played Bloodsport. They the had Idris Elba playing Bloodsport. Margaret, Ma, uh, Margaret Robbie was like the best character in the whole damn freaking Suicide Squad anyway, because she played the perfect Harley fucking Quinn. She was the perfect Harley Quinn. Dude, she Which was. Which is why it jacks me up that she plays Barbie. <laughs> what jacks me up is the, way, is the way in the first Suicide Squad, they made Harley Quinn look like a hoe. Yeah, very much. They made her look like a hoe. I swear, at times in that movie, you can see Margaret Robbie's cooch. I mean, I'm not complaining. I am. Huh? Bitch, put some meat on your bones. Oh. Yeah, so we had to get a little comedic with that. <laughs> so, you know... Mike, just the other day you were talking to me and like we I was telling you about some of the projects I got rattling around in my head when I created yeah, down what they're about. And as so, I understand it, you actually got some input you want for the, our viewing audience. So one of the ones that I'm actually curious about right now I see a peekaboo person. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, JJ420, a.k.a. the Crazy Taco Lady. Woo! Taco Lady! Uh. Yeah, still working on getting her show put together, just so you guys know. We're still working on getting that put together. You know, uh, things have been a little hectic and crazy. I totally want dibs on a guest spot on that show. Ah, <laughs> my dude, of course. But I'd actually like to go ahead and one. let everybody know that uh, I want to go ahead and let everybody know that at some point or another, any one of our subscribers, anyone who watches us on our Facebook live feeds, when we have live specials, by all means, by all means, you are welcome to guest co-host the show with me or with Mike as well. Sounds I awesome. actually want to do something like that for my fans. Uh, we can we can designate at least a 20-minute segment to where we have a special guest. Well, I mean, it'd be cool to do a live show and then, like, you know, everybody who's chiming into the live, you know, they'll, they'll start talking to us you know, via, you know, the messages and then answering questions and stuff like that. You know, while you're answering questions, I can kind of scroll through and see what, like, the next set of questions are so that way we can, you know, kind of double team it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Mike, uh, I, I told you, like, six or seven different titles the other day, man. I what am dying to know about what this Red Raven thing is about. Ah, an oldie but goodie. So, Red Ravens is something I kind of came up with uh, back when I was a teenager. Um, for any of us who came up, even just a little bit in the 90s, all of us can remember watching Saturday morning cartoons 
on Fox Kids. In one of the shows that came on, it was always on in the early morning hours. I rarely got to see the episodes, but luckily I got to watch the whole series thanks to YouTube. The Mega Man Show. For any of you anime junkies who are true anime junkies, Mega Man is a must-know classic. Because not only do you have regular Mega Man, but you also have Mega Man X. It is one of the longest running game franchises there has ever been. I myself was blessed to play Mega Man X for the Super Nintendo. It was a damn good game. A rat when I was damn a kid. good game. Love that game. So, uh, with Red Raven, you know, I wanted to implicate that Mega Man effect to him. Make him like he's something special. There's something special about him that constantly allows him to change up his arsenal, change up his form. And so, basically... I also, everybody knows, I'm a horror junkie to the end. So I wanted to make this guy fucking scary. If I had to create a comparison off a well-known IP, my man Keanu Reeves, you're going to love this if you ever see this, bro. Red Raven is pretty much John Wick mixed with Constantine. <laughs> that's a that sounds like a very dangerous combination there. Yeah, very dangerous indeed. You're talking about a man who can completely atomize a portion of his anatomy and convert it into biological machinery. Like he has these yeah. cells in his body, and he also has a radioactive signature. Because this is basically one of my many post-apocalypse type projects. The world is still rebuilding. Everything has signs that the world obviously went to hell. And so, like, all of this occurred due to an interdimensional collapse. Um, Basically, the scientist who was messing around with stuff he shouldn't have been messing with Under the influence of an interdimensional entity, he basically breaks the dimensional fabrics between our world and a world that uh, some would probably describe as hell. Because these interdimensional creatures take physical manifestation as machines. Wow. In our world, they cannot come as flesh and bone. So this is going to end up being a uh, comic book then or a graphic novel type project? Well, actually, yes, because that's how I wrote the original story. Okay. In terms of handwriting, this story was almost as long as the very first story I ever wrote, which was uh, back when I was 15, I started writing a book and I just kept going and going and going. And the next thing you know, I had a book written within a year that was literally about that thick. Wow. More than 870 pages of graphic novel. Wow. Which was all done in handwriting first. That's a, that's beyond a graphic novel. That's a series. <laughs> and the funny part is the first book covers the first two bloodlines of this family that the book revolves around. That sounds pretty damn cool. Yeah, I even started writing a uh, sequel to it. Where do we... uh, So since the first one's pretty much done, uh, when do we think that we might... The public might actually get the C release on that and be able to start, you know, get their hands on it. Well, sadly, I lost the pages to Chronicles of Van Zyl uh, not long after I moved out of my mom's place when I was 18 and I went to college. A lot of it ended up uh, severely damaged. 
Gotcha. So you're rewriting. Yeah, that one I'm rewriting. That is a, a book that I'm definitely going to try to have released this year. Um, as well as the one we're on, Red Ravens. Awesome. Um, so pretty much the way Red Ravens goes is there's literally this guy, funny enough, named John Raven. Okay. So you have John Wick, you have John Constantine. John is just a good name to use. It is a good name, not going to lie. So with basically a whole bunch of hellish uh, hellish operations done to his body. And I'm not talking plastic surgery. I'm talking about chemical injections, dying, being brought back to life just to die again. You know, he had to go through this for several years. But that is only in the prelog. The prelog is written out. The actual story begins after he has his powers and is pursuing the scientists responsible for making our world into the hellscape that it is. Um, and this is going to be a serialized project eventually. This is going to be an animated project. It sounds like it would be a pretty badass animated project. Oh, yeah. Um, and the cool thing about this guy... Uh-oh. We got some phone action going on. Uh, <laughs> One of the coolest things about this guy is he does not quit. And the worse he gets beat down, even brought to death several times throughout the story, uh, he actually comes back from all of that so fucking strong that just within this first book, the universe fears him. And when I say the universe, I mean every extra Tory dimension around. But as he as he journeys through this story, the reason why the title Red Ravens is plural is he ends up finding other people who are mutations like him and who admire him so much that he trains them to be other Red Ravens. Interesting. Okay. Well, that sounds like a really cool project that you got working. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And, dude, some question. of the creature work in this, not even a mother could love that face. Because <laughs> I'm talking right, about putting question. some pretty grotesque shit in this. So... My next question is another project that you got working. Because I know you guys have multiple projects. We only have so much time in a show to talk about them all. So I've only selected a few. But my next one is one we uh, you had a working title going and you finally came up with that title. And that would be A Breed of Evil. Yes. What can you tell us about A Breed of Evil? Okay, so... A breed of evil kind of surrounds this cop who was uh, sent out to this mansion to investigate um, to investigate the disappearance of several people who went out to this mansion but never returned. And like the disappearances are becoming more and more frequent. Um. <clears throat> With a breed of evil, this is sort of Resident Evil and Evil Within slapped together in perfect quantity. He goes to this mansion and right off the rip, he finds himself in a situation where he's got these like, like oversized zombies coming at him. Yo, these are mutated aberrations that have grown to inhuman heights. You're talking about zombies that are like 
between eight and ten feet fucking tall. And in this mansion, you know, these creatures are just walking around, but there's even worse waiting the further inside he gets. He ends up trying to escape the mansion only to find that the road that he came in as well as everything surrounding the mansion has fallen into lava. He is trapped and has no way out of this mansion. So he ends up having to battle his way through these creatures and worse. There's other creatures that are bigger and more ferocious than the zombies. Um, wow. And the whole thing about it is he doesn't realize that he entered a dimension of pure nightmare when he crossed the threshold into that mansion during a certain hour of night. So, like, this mansion only leaves our dimension at a certain time at night and when the sun rises it returns wow that certainly is a breed of evil <laughs> oh and it gets sicker than that dude this has all the elements well, of a we don't want to give well now 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 hold on now X. we both know that we don't want to give too much away because if we start giving too much away then people are all like, well, I feel like I've already watched it. <laughs> uh, you know me. I get excited when I talk about I know you get stuff. excited when you talk about the projects, but, you know, you got to – it's like you always tell me. You give them a taste, and you leave it alone. And then maybe again you give them a little taste, and you leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, well, I can tell you that this one is also going to be a printed series. Awesome to talk about some of your live projects that you were talking about uh, doing uh, in the future. I don't know if you have anything set in stone yet or any kind of titles out there yet or no, no, not really. Um, I am wanting to uh, do a couple of live actions, but that requires more people and resources than I currently have. Um, Fair enough. But be that as it may, I am kind of theorizing some stuff in my head. I just don't know how I'm going to go about executing it just yet in terms of putting a story to it. Right now, uh, I kind of have the visuals in my head, but not really the story, if that makes any sense. Makes sense. All right. Well, I didn't mean to get off topic, but I was just piquing my curiosity. So last... But certainly not least, what can we tell people about Gemini Order? Uh, yes. Okay, so Gemini Order is a full-on paranormal project. If I had to absolutely describe it uh, with known IP, it would be uh, the Avengers meets the Order of... Uh, Damn, that movie slips my tongue. Oh, uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Ah, okay. Um, okay. Pretty much, this is one of those projects. It's not a post-apocalyptic, and it occurs in a made-up world. But what they call paranormals are actually people who have the ability to utilize different forms of magic. Okay. So pretty much everybody's a uh, paranormal means they're witch of some, some sort of variety, witch or warlock. Um, however, magic works a little bit differently in this story because they have to use what's called catalysts, which is everyday items that are specifically theirs that can utilize their uh, ectoplasm, which is pretty much the invisible layer of energy every soul has. And that item transforms into a piece 
of an outfit that allows them to use certain powers. Huh. Okay. That sounds pretty awesome. Now, is this one also going to be a graphic novel as well as an actual live animation project? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, there's a, a total of right off the rip five characters okay. that you will constantly see. Uh, okay. One of them is uh, one of them goes by uh, code name Psycho, which means he's a psychokinetic. He can use any form of magic so long as he either sees it or absorbs it in some sort of way. Okay. Um, basically like a copycat practitioner. However, he does have his own sets of spells that he utilizes through melee weapons and a couple varieties of guns that he carries. Okay. Who else do we got on this team? Uh, we have pretty much a character I think a lot of guys are going to get a super boner for, which is Madame Lycan. Madame Lycan is actually a shaman, which means she can control elements of nature, but she can also turn into a she-wolf, which is the female version of a werewolf. Okay. That seems pretty cool. And while in that form, she can actually, uh, while she's in that form, she can actually use her elemental magic. It's not a one or the other scenario. Okay. Um, you've also got, and I swear you're going to love how I came up with this one. He goes by the name Double Shock. His Double real shock. name is Tyler Stevens, which anyone who knows me nice. Nice. knows that that's my brother's name backwards. Oh. Love the kid, and I'm proud of him. He's getting ready to go to college. Yes, he is. September. Yeah, he feels like just yesterday uh, I was changing his diapers. I know. He graduates June 6th and uh, off to college in September. Nice. It's not that far away if you really think about it. We're already heading into April. The fourth, uh, fourth member of the team goes by code name Mechator. Mechator. He's an alchemist. He summons metallic objects and stuff like that to his body and transforms himself into sort of like a mechanical minotaur wielding mm. gas machine guns. Nice. And he also breathes fire. Just because, why the fuck not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? I mean, he can break through and walls the last and he's got the ability to burn shit while he's at it. Who is the last member of this team? The last member of the team is actually Psycho's twin sister. Okay. Her name is Rebecca, and as far as anyone knows, she's not a magician. She's not a paranormal. She's instead, like Psycho, a member of an organization that polices paranormal, paranormal active crimes, which means crimes that are committed by paranormals, this task force goes after them. They call themselves the Bureau of Paranormal Police Commission. Okay. So they don't actually technically have powers. What's that? So this the so they don't actually technically have powers then. I'm not like, 
the sister the sister doesn't have powers technically then that anyone knows about I can okay. neither confirm nor deny. Oh, there he goes. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. I can neither confirm or deny. Thanks a lot, Feige. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Fucking tell you, Feige. God damn it. I can either confirm or deny. That's a good theory. I can either confirm or deny it. All I can say is she is a badass even without magical powers. Now, do we have a designated leader of this team? Like somebody who, you know, kind of directs them and everything? Psycho. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And now, what Psycho. About Psy- now, now, what about Psycho? Now, we know that his sister doesn't have any powers, but does Psycho have powers? What's that? Now, we know that his sister doesn't have powers, but does Psycho have powers? Yes. He's a psychokinetic. Okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But it appears that the sister doesn't, but we're not sure because you can either confirm or deny that. I have a feeling that when we do confirm or deny this, which it sounds more like it confirm than anything else, it's going to be something fucking of epic proportions. <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny, but it's an excellent theory. All I that's can say is you better expecting. catch the season finale of season one. That's, that's pretty much the answer I was expecting. <laughs> exactly what I was expecting. But... Since my last question was about Gemini Order, and since that question involved magic, I actually have something I'd like to show you. Oh, yes. So, what I have is my special set of crayons and my special coloring book. A lot of people don't think that magicians do anything else besides magic stuff. Well, that's true, and we also have a special way we like to color also. So as you can see by my special coloring book, it's completely blank. Well, not blank, but, I mean, it's not colored in. But if I take my crayons and I go like this to them, give it a little rubbity dub 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 in the book, you can see that the crayons are actually gone. Um, but in turn is the fastest way you could possibly color a coloring book. Wow. But I'm pretty positive that if we take our crayons and that, oh wait, this is the blank box. Um, I think I might've messed up my book a little bit. Oh no. Um, is it completely? Is it? Yeah, it's pretty blank. Um, okay, 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 okay. I got an idea. Okay, so here's my thought process. If I go and get my crayons back, there we go. <laughs> that seems to work. And we go like this to the book. Maybe, just maybe, we can just start from where we left off at the beginning. <laughs> now that is impressive. Yeah, yeah. This is. I seem to lose my crayons quite a bit, though. <laughs> but it's not that big of a deal because all you got to do is turn the beat around. Got your crayons back now. <laughs> I tell you, Mike, I swear. I need to get you your <laughs> own show where you could just do at least like 30 minutes of routine. And just make that shit look cool. <laughs> well, thanks, man. Thanks. So, uh, so what's going on with uh, the like? So, so I know you got other projects in the works. You know, we talked about Gemini Order. We talked about Red Raven. We talked about uh, the Breed of Evil project. You know, uh, everybody knows that right now the anime stuff's kind of on hold right now. All the animation. And now we're focusing more on graphic novels and comics right now. And, of course, the X show, which is doing phenomenal, with over a 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> yes, um, So I know that there's other YouTube projects that are coming into play. Like you've mentioned before, the JD420 show. Where are we at on that right now? Well, right at the moment, you know, we're still kind of, you know, coming up with some sketches as far as how we want that show to go. 
Uh, we actually just recently got us some camera equipment in, you know, something that doesn't have to be attached to the top of my computer screen. So now you can take the show on the road and be more mobile. Yes. Yes. All I have to do to do that is get a laptop. There we go. But, uh, for the sake of, you know, doing the 420 show right here in our home, you know, we're still kind of, you know, trying to come up with sketches, but we mostly just want to show people how conversations between us tend to go. Okay. Okay. So is it kind of, so is the JD 420 show going to be kind of like just a conversation between you and her or like? Well, we'll have conversations. We'll have guest co-hosts, yourself included. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Anytime. You know, and uh, one thing that I definitely am trying to conceptualize with her about this show is we kind of want to watch people do stupid shit and then laugh at them. Okay. And okay. kind of I mean, poke I mean, fun like at just works. how this shit tends to happen. I mean, that, yeah, that's cool. You can do, like, a compilation show where, like, people are doing stupid shit. Y'all do the commentary on it. Yes. That works. Yes. You know, and not yeah, all of it's going to be conversation. Some of it's going to be, you know, uh, some of it's going to be, you know, us looking up shit to laugh at. Yeah. You know, a lot of people in this world nowadays, they get too anxious, too angry, too quickly. You know, so one thing that I def that definitely helped me coming up in the world, and I still watch stuff today, is I actually love comedies. I'm a horror movie buff. I find Freddy Krueger to be a comedian of his own right. Uh, but welcome to prime time, bitch. <laughs> you're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. You know what, Mike? I'm gonna have to show you how it's done again. Oh shit! Here we go. This is prime time, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and the bad part All is, right. I gotta take my glasses off to do that. You got to, you got to, you gotta get the full look. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Uh, we were talking right before we started the show, and uh, ooh, looks like we're getting some down torrential downpours out there. Oh man, I got oh, a yeah. sunshine on my end. Dude, weather in Michigan has been shit lately. I mean, I got a little bit of cloud out there right now, but it's nothing really too bad. Uh, but, uh, you know, we were talking right before the show, and I was debating on whether or not I even wanted to wear my glasses. And you're like, yep. dude, wear the glasses. You don't look the same. Show everybody. Show everybody. Like, take your glasses off like you wanted to. All right. All right, everybody. Look at, look, look at eggs, right? Yeah, all can't tell me when he gets these comments fixed up. Let me know in the comments. Does he look crazier with or without the glasses? Because I think he looks like he's about to jump through the camera and slaughter somebody. <laughs> and now he's just a, especially when he laughs like that. All right, now put the glasses back on. No, put what you should be on. concerned about is when I laugh like this. <laughs> yeah, that's when Mr. Hyde comes out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's when Freddy comes out. <laughs> and now, now see, you look like you can be talked to and approachable when you put your glasses back on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I can't wait for my hair to actually be longer, so that way I could just comb it back and actually look right with this look. Then I won't look so psychotic. I'll look a little more like uh, a twist, gentleman. <laughs> can I go back to your Jesus hair? <laughs> Actually, believe it or not, JJ420, she actually likes me with the Jesus hair. Oh, you like the long Jesus hair. Speak of the devil, and she shall answer. What up? Ladies and gentlemen, introducing my lady, JJ420. What up, JJ? Listening to dubstep. That's what's up. Hell yeah. Well, you know, you know, you know, uh, me and him, we're just talking bullshit, you know, back and forth. So, what we do. Yeah, doesn't sound like anything new, does it? <laughs> no, not really. But, you know, the people who are subscribing must like it because he's got a thousand subscribers, so they must like the bullshit we talk about. <laughs> yeah, obviously. 
I mean, he's doing something right. Yeah. Although it could just be the radiating sexiness between the two of us. It's just so much that people just keep on clicking. I gotta see more. <laughs> <laughs> well, so now you got a little bit of info about some of the projects I got coming out, Mike. Uh, should I expect you to be one of the uh, names on the invoice list? Oh, absolutely. Especially for absolutely. the Director X edition? I oh, have a most question. definitely. Do you like tacos? I fucking love tacos. I know, right? Who the fuck doesn't love tacos? Wait until you try my tacos. JJ, I, there are just some things that should not come out of your mouth. Oh my <laughs> Lord. Okay. I knew what she was talking about. You took it to a different level, my friend. I would love to try the tacos that come out of your kitchen. <laughs> yes, food. I'm talking yes, about food, food damn it. <laughs> talking about food. Oh. All man. right. Even though in Las Vegas there is a restaurant called the Pink Taco. I will never go there. It is literally called the Pink Taco. It is inside the Hard Rock Hotel. <laughs> and it's always busy. It's got women, it's got nothing but women waitresses, and guys are eating in there all the time. That way they can go in there and say, I ate the Pink Taco. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I walk past that restaurant, I just like ah. <laughs> every fucking time. Never failed. I've always wanted My to wife. set up a restaurant for myself called JD's Taco because I can make like a million kajillion taco recipes. I would love to try each and every one of your taco recipes. I can make Native I American tacos. I can make Mexican tacos. I can make, you know, American tacos, which is just regular tacos. I can make um what what was it called like um stuffed shell tacos, taco casserole, taco casserole, the grilled taco. Yep, grilled taco. There's a lot of shit I can make, man. It's all because I'm a taco Speaking of which, we were actually just talking about your show. Still coming up with the sketch, people, but it's coming soon. Yo, you should have a segment in the show talking about different taco recipes. So I you know so many people my taco recipes. If I tell people my taco recipes, they're not gonna be my recipes. <laughs> no, 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 no. You only share certain recipes. You have so many of them, so you share certain ones. That could be a segment in your show. The Native it's called American... JD's Taco Time. Yeah, I guess, you know. The Native American tacos are actually, you know what fry bread is? I love fry bread. Okay, well, the, you make fry bread and you put um, you put the taco meat and, you know, you make a, the taco meat a certain way. You know, you mix it with, like, uh, well, uh, refried beans and, you know, certain other stuff. And you put, you put that, instead of a shell, you put it on fry bread. And you put all your that, favorite toppings on it. Yeah, put all amazing. your favorite to toppings on it. And it is like filling as fuck. But I ate two of them. That sounds amazing with like some sour cream and lettuce and tomato. Well, that's what Native American tacos are. You should try it with cilantro. It's really good. Oh, I love cilantro. <sighs> that's what you normally use with Mexican tacos is cilantro instead of lettuce. Oh my god, like, so you, when you guys come down to visit, you're making tacos, right? Of course you're making tacos. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I guess I could. I could bring the rest I will, of you. I will, we will go to the store together. Me and you, we will go to the <laughs> store together. I will purchase said taco ingredients for you to make. We'll see what I can do, man. All right. Her taco dip, nobody can figure it out, but it is the best taco dip you will ever eat. I want yeah. that, too. Taco dip, yeah. I can make some great-ass taco dip. You know I what? That might actually dip. make a pretty good live segment. I'm telling you, JD Taco Time. <laughs> Welcome to Taco Tuesday. Check it out. 
No, no, check it out. It's JD Taco Time. There's always time for tacos. Literally, I could make anything you ask for and make it into a taco certain something. You are the taco queen. Yeah, I am. You have no idea. Everyone since high school called me crazy taco lady. And don't you fucking forget it. That is dope. Have you ever heard of Invader Zim? I love Invader Zim. Well, you know how he used to yell tacos? Absolutely. That used to be my ringtone for a text message when I was in when I was in high school and everyone was called me crazy taco lady. Tacos! <laughs> well, I love Invader Zim. That was actually one of the reasons why I loved the um uh what was that what was that damn game? Um Oh my god, it was like it was it was a they made a newer one too. It's like you're an alien and you were invading Earth. I can't damn remember the damn name. Destroy all humans! Yes, destroy all humans. So destroy all humans in that game, his commanding officer was voiced by the same voice actor that does Zim. Oh, that's awesome. Dude. So yeah. Dude, and every right. once in a while, and every once in a while, like he wasn't there the last couple of years, but a few years back over here in Savannah at the Comic Con, the voice actor from Zim shows up every once in a while. That's groovy. Yeah, and he'll get on the microphone and he'll he'll tell he'd be like, "All you pathetic humans need to get over here and get your autographs before I blow this entire building up." <laughs> Dude. Now, I don't know whether or not this is true. This has just been something I've been hearing coming through the network. Uh, it's, uh, we all shall never forget the day Jason David Frank, the original Power Ranger, sadly yeah. passed away. That did suck. Later, Taco Ladies and gentlemen, JJ420, exiting. Well, I don't know whether or not this is true, but there is. You know, talk. I only ate, but after all that fucking talk from her, I'm starving now. <laughs> so am I. There is actually talk, my brother, that JBF's daughter is going to be the Tommy Oliver in the new Power Rangers movie. Really? He is taking up the mantle from her dearly departed dad. She's even going to Comic Cons. Oh, wow. I can neither confirm nor deny, but that's the word on the network. Whether or not it's true, I'm not sure. If any of our viewing audience happens to know any more information than what I may be hearing, please leave a comment below. I would love the actual feedback on whether or not some of the information we are hearing is true or false. But I will say this also. Facebook, stop cock teasing me with Keanu Reeves as either Alucard from Helsing Ultimate or Dante from Devil May Cry. <laughs> you know what they also keep teasing with is Keanu Reeves' Ghost Rider. Yes, I know. Now 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 here's the now here's the true statement though. Like Keanu Reeves has said in interviews. That he would love to play a Marvel hero, and if they cast him to be a Marvel hero, he wants to be Ghost Rider because Ghost Rider is his all time favorite hero. Ghost Rider is right up his alley with the whole supernatural sci fi vibe. You know, so that would be a Keanu Reeves type role. And I think that with Kevin Feige and Marvel and Disney Studios backing it up, this it could be a really badass film if they made a Ghost Rider movie. Absolutely. I think that now, see, I think. Where they made a mistake in the original Ghost Rider movies, it wasn't Nicolas Cage because he did a good job playing Ghost Rider. Absolutely, the script, the script wasn't as good as it could have been. They made the bad guys way weaker and gave Ghost Rider too easy of a time to defeat them. Um, the second movie was really bad. Ah. Um, but I feel like that with Kevin Feige and everybody, and them writing a better script. Um, I really think that, and if they make it not a PG-13, but an R-rated film, like they're doing for the new Deadpool movie, yes, that it could be a really, really awesome film. 
Yeah, and you and I are both Marvel enthusiasts all the way. The only DC characters I really care for are Batman and his list of villains. I can agree with that. The rest of the Justice League, uh, go jump off a bridge. In the case of Superman, make it kryptonite. You yeah. know? Well, when but, he jumps off the bridge, just shackle his legs with kryptonite weights. <laughs> but in all honesty, Mike, you know, I actually still have a piece of you that I always keep around the house. Would you like to know what that is, dude? What's that? You remember these? Oh, shoot, yeah. The uh, the uh, slides that I gave you. Yes, I still wear them even the day. Benefits of your studio being in your home. <laughs> I only dress nice from the waist up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, actually I am pretty much uh I am pretty much wearing like an outfit here, my usual work uniform. Gotta look presentable. Oh I'm actually on another one of these to come in, then I can mix mix and match them. Nice. Yes. Yes. As you know, Mike, I have a very steampunk Victorian lifestyle. I like to dress like a bit of a casual gentleman. Every once in a while, I like to smoke from a pipe. <laughs> Young Hobbit, spark my gunja. <laughs> well, I'd like to actually show you a little something that I was actually working on just for your show, if you wouldn't mind. Oh. Bring the camera down here a little bit. So, <clears throat> gosh, let me get this hacking out of my way. So what I need for this is a laying guard and a pen. Okay, so here's how this works. You can see this is a regular, ordinary playing card and a regular pen. So here's how this works. I'm going to take my pen. I'm going to penetrate it through the card. A lot of people have seen these kind of tricks before where you just go ahead and stab the card on through, and then you have the stab all the way through. But what makes this trick unique is the fact that if I can just manipulate it just a little bit here, and just kind of hold it, you can kind of see it start to move all around without actually making a solid hole. I want to show you it from the other side as well, that I'm not doing anything, and maybe even a side view of both. Now, the hard part is, is getting it right to the point to where you just, ah, there you go. Not a rip, not a tear, anywhere. Now, here's the other crazy thing. A lot of people are all like, oh, well, that's a fake pen. That's magnetic. As you can see, if I just go like this, if I can get a hold of it here, it's actually internal stuff. But what I can show you is that if it was magnetic in any way, shape, or form, it... Uh, wouldn't actually be able to uh, write on the card. Nice. So, now that I showed you that it can write on the card, once again, if I stab it, just like this, and I show you on this side that this is the same exact card because you can see where we wrote on it right there. And I'm going right over the marking. That's trippy as hell, bro. And then it comes up, and then one, two, three. Three. <laughs> oh, nice. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt, Mr. Magic Mike Ovard, before we go, we want to ask you to try to like and subscribe. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the notification bell. 
Don't be afraid to drop us a comment in the comment box below. I'm Apex Rebel X, Magic Mike Ovar, JJ420. Wait, 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 wait. Don't, 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 don't stop the show. I got to show you one more thing before we go. One more thing that I've never attempted before at any point in time, even on camera. It just came to my mind, and I think I can do it, and I want to do it right here, right now. Just give me one second. Okay. Probably one of the hardest things I've ever tried in Magic. And I don't know why I want to do this now, but I've been inspired because I want tacos. <laughs> okay. Who doesn't want tacos, bro? Exactly. All right. I have a nickel and my pen. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell yeah. That's fucking groovy, oh. man. A pen that even penetrates a nickel. All right. Obviously, it's just Magic Mike, man. And thank That's God, not a stripper. Yeah, for sure. That's <laughs> right. Remember, people pay me to keep my clothes on. Yeah. No offense, but yeah. You have bigger yeah. titties than I do. I do. I'm in they're, sexy. Uh, they're sexy, though. <laughs> I know there's a lot of guys who are watching this show that are probably thinking, that lucky fucker. <laughs> Goodbye, right. everybody. Later, y'all. Oh, man. That was fun. <laughs>